Hello and welcome to Chapel in the Woods Bible Church. Thank you for this time uh, virtually to get together and uh, praise you in song, uh, to praise you through looking at your word and uh, through sharing with each other, uh, you know, e even though it is virtual. I pray, Lord, that uh, as we look forward, uh, that you will help us to return to normalcy uh, responsibly and uh, effectively. Uh, in Jesus' name, amen. Let your spirit come fall upon me now. Let your spirit come fall upon me now. Let the
are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord. Good morning. Welcome to Chapel in the Woods Bible Church. Our missionary of the week is Becky Quick. Uh, you probably can't see it from there, but uh, we sent out an email with the attachment so you can uh, read up with Becky and the things that she's uh, looking at at this time in her life. Uh, a couple changes are coming up in her job, so you can be praying for that. Um, uh, some reorganization due to some retirements and also just a change in, in direction and focus, I guess, for parts of her department. Um, so you can be with them as they... Um, proceed with wisdom, hopefully, and uh, so that's what she's praying for, wisdom as they make the changes, and then for her just to keep focused on her work during it. As we all know in this uh, current climate and culture, distractions are aplenty, and so trying to actually focus on the job that she's, uh, you know, there to do with editing, um, you know, can be a challenge with uh, changes in her organization and then everything else going on right now in the world, obviously, so we pray for her. Um, the biggest praise, though, is that uh, the next grandchild was born healthy and, you uh, so they are celebrating that together, and Kat is uh, beginning to look at life with uh, two little kids now and uh, getting back to uh, her job as a 911 dispatcher. They're trying to see what that's going to look like going forward, so be, uh, be in prayer for that. But they praise that uh, the new, new baby's here and healthy and uh, doing well, growing already, um, thankfully, and uh, doing well two weeks in, so they're, they're glad for that. Um, Wednesday nights, we actually met in person this last Wednesday uh, at the church. There, obviously, you know, we kept our distance and, and doing it responsibly, but it was good to see people in person. We, uh, we had an interesting look at um, just some of the, the modern motivations, I guess, in culture, and this was well before the last couple of weeks. This actual talk that we went through was before uh, the COVID thing and before uh, recent events, obviously, in our, our culture. But uh, it, it was interesting to see some of the dynamics at work as seen by one apologist and um, what he sees really as a call out of 1 Corinthians 13 to, to love people. And uh, so that was a really good talk, and we're planning on meeting again in person this uh, coming week. And we're starting a series on uh, creation stories from different uh, religions, different cultures, and comparing that to Genesis, uh, the creation story that we have in the Bible. We went through the Genesis story already, um, so we started there, and then uh, we're picking up, and we're, I think we're going to do it by, um, by culture. So we're kind of going to pick like uh, South America and then Africa and then Europe, uh, you know, et cetera. So ought to be an interesting look at some of the different creation stories that are out there. Um, let's see, giving. Um, you're able to give in several different ways still, even though we're not physically here. You can send in a check. You can uh, go on our website, hit the, uh, you know, give button, or you can also pay via your bank, uh, you know, pay now. I don't know what it is. I, I'm, I'm into technology, but I'm not into technology enough, I guess. So anyway, whatever that is on your bank account, you can, uh, you can give that way as well. So as we go into, uh, prayer this morning, I just wanted to, to say that we're not, um, unaware of the the difficulty going on and the the tragic situations that are happening right now especially in the Minneapolis area um, we have friends and, and former you know pastors here that are up in that area at churches and so um, our hearts do go out for our culture and uh, we really want to see um, God's love uh, shown through this uh, in whatever way possible um, we do uh, yeah I'll uh, we are discussing it as as elders and, and uh, you know, just keeping our, our ears and heads uh, focused on things that are happening in our culture. And uh, so we may have future comments on it in the future, but as of right now, you know, we, we our hearts just go out for all the things that are happening in our, our world. So let's pray. God, we do pray for um, you. We pray for your spirit to move. We pray for um, love and grace and mercy and justice, and uh, we pray for um, healing. We pray for unification in a, a society that um, has so many things being thrown at it right now, and uh, we just pray that just you would help us in this local church, God, to um, let your spirit work through us in love uh, as whatever neighbor we come in contact with, God, that you would help us to love them as you would uh, have done and will do and are doing. So we thank you for that. We pray for um, uh, just the continued wisdom and uh, 
deciding when to come back and uh, gather together physically in, in this location, God. And I just pray for um, people who are being affected by it physically in terms of having the actual virus, that you would help the medical staff treat those people. I pray that the, the people who are being affected by losing jobs and um, you know, having stress and everything else of uh, kids at home, that you would be at work in those situations. And I thank you that you love us enough to um, not turn your back and not have your head in the sand when things like this happen in our society and culture, and that you want to be involved in our lives during this and go through it with us. And we thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning or evening or whenever you're watching this. Um, we are in the midst of a series, summer series, on encouragement in the midst of a pandemic. Uh, we've been through a couple months of stay at home and a couple months of social distancing and so forth. And that, that kind of makes things difficult for people. In fact, I read a study this week, a couple days ago actually, that uh, they, they estimate one in three people in the U.S. have now clinical anxiety or depression. That's 110 million people. And that's not just unhappiness, that is clinical anxiety or clinical depression. And sometimes we can just be overwhelmed by this kind of stuff. And, and, and joy is kind of perhaps a distant memory. And now we have uh, riots going on and protests and, and, and racial tensions going on. And, and it can be a difficult time. And we do need to pray uh, for uh, our country and for all, uh, all of us. Uh, but today is actually Pentecost Sunday. And Pentecost is the time which believers receive the power of the Spirit's indwelling. In Acts 1.8, Jesus promised that. Uh, Jesus promised the, the Spirit to come. Uh, he promised it beforehand, actually, and said He was going to come and He was going to send another comforter, another counselor. And then in Acts 1.8, He says, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses both in Jerusalem, in all Judea, and Samaria, and even to the remotest parts of the earth. And that promise was kept on Pentecost Sunday. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly there came from heaven a noise like a violent rushing wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them tongues of fire, distributing themselves, and they rested on each one of them, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues, and the Spirit was giving them utterance. Now there were Jews living in Jerusalem, devout men from every nation under heaven. And when this sound occurred, the crowd came together and they were bewildered because each one of them was hearing them speak in their own language. The point here is the Holy Spirit had come upon them for power and a power to witness. Uh, and it's, it's a power that, that is not a, it's not a gift. I don't think this particular use of tongues is a gift because each of them there that came from different places heard in their own language. And what were they hearing? They were hearing the witness about Jesus. Tongues, in this case, were for power for witness, witnessing. And, and still in this age of uh, coronavirus, it's still in this age of d disease, and in, a, in an age of, here recently, of racial issues, it's still the power of witness. We are to be witnessing, and we still have that power to witness. I haven't probably been the best witness the last two months in, in isolation, but really as we see the Holy Spirit coming down on Pentecost Sunday, it's a power for witness. And uh, let us all open our eyes and see and who we need to talk to a, 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 about Jesus, because Jesus is the one who brings peace. Jesus is the one who brings salvation. Jesus is the one who helps us move past issues in our lives. And we also see that because the Holy Spirit is also the power for life. Uh, the next few weeks we're going to be talking about the fruits of the Spirit. The Spirit came down on Pentecost Sunday and gave the disciples the ability to, to witness about Jesus. Less than 20 years later, Paul wrote the book of Galatians. And the book of Galatians is where we find the fruits of the Spirit. And the point of Galatians is that neither salvation or sanctification is by law. 
and he's looking at the Galatians and they're, they're wanting to move back from grace, from faith, into resting in the law, resting in that thing that told them exactly what to do, when to do it, how they knew that they were in, in the kingdom of, of Israel. And so the Jews in Galatia were moving back into and putting themselves under the law of Israel. And so the Jews were thinking the relationship with God and each other was really a life of law. And Paul is looking at this, like I said, it's less than probably about 15 years later after Pentecost Sunday. And he's looking at this, you know, neither salvation nor sanctification is by law. Are you so foolish, Galatians, having begun by the Spirit? Are you now being perfected by the flesh? Are you being perfected by law? You're foolish if you think that's true. In Romans 6, 14, for sin did not, it shall not be master over you, for you are not under law, but under grace. There's something about law is that it makes us want to break it. And that's one of Paul's arguments in Romans. He's saying you had law and you were under law and you couldn't keep it. And now you are under grace. We're not under law. Because now law, Jesus fulfilled that law, so we're not under law, we're under grace. So you're not, it's like you're not forced to break it anymore by your very sinful nature. So you're not under that law because you're not under that law, because you're under grace, you don't have to break the law. But if you're led by the Spirit, you're not under the law in Galatians 5.18. Now, is this just the law, the ceremonial part, or is it the whole law of the Old Testament? There's, there's lots of arguments about this in theological circles and doctrinal circles and, and, and so forth. And some, some feel that when Paul is talking about these things in Romans and Galatians, it's just the ceremonial law. It's the don't eat shrimp, which is like, I don't know why that was in the law because shrimp is good. Uh, it, it don't it, it need to be circumcised. You have to eat special foods. You have to have certain celebrations and Passovers that you do every year. And that's the, cere the ceremonial law. But the moral laws is still obligatory to the believer in, in Jesus Christ. I don't think this is just ceremonial law. What Paul is talking about is Galatians and in Romans. And it's especially in Romans where you see the, the whole point of what he's saying is that you're not under the law so that you can live by the Spirit. We're not under the Old Testament law. That's why we are under the New Covenant, the New Testament. In Romans, Paul is talking about sin and righteousness. In Galatians, Paul is talking about all the law, and the circumcision is symbolic. The question then comes up, if we're not under the law then, how can we be good? How can we be not lawless? Should we continue in sin then? Is that okay? How can we not be unrighteous? What shall we say then? Are we continuing in sin that grace may increase? And he says, no, may it never be. In Galatians, I think he answers the question, for the flesh sets its desire against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. For they are in opposition to one another, so that you may not do the things that you please. That if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. But now the deeds of the flesh are evident, which are immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, outbursts of anger, disputes, dissensions, factions, envying, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these, of which I forewarned you, just as I have forewarned you, that... Those who practice such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So Paul is not saying, hey, it's good to be bad. Uh, Paul is, is laying out, if you want to see what unrighteousness looks like, this is what it looks like. But that's not you. The Spirit's indwelling, on the other hand, produces fruit. But, and then the next verses are, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. On Pentecost Sunday, we celebrate the coming and the dwelling of the Holy Spirit that gives us power to witness about Jesus. It also is the indwelling of the Spirit who produces the fruits of the Spirit. This is the Holy Spirit. 
if we, if we have these things, if we have the fruit of the Spirit, if we walk in the Spirit, we can walk through life in the midst of pandemics, in the midst of unrest, in the midst of difficulties. Now, fruit is often used metaphorically in the Bible, and we, we know that. We use it, fruit, as, as a metaphorical thing. thing. And in John, Jesus says, My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit. He's not talking that they, they bear apples or oranges. He's talking about the fruit of their life. And so prove to me and my disciples. Let's use it in a metaphorical sense. You know, it's like my grandfather had almond trees. And if I would go out in his orchard, he also had walnut trees. And so if I would go out in his orchard and I'd say, that's an almond tree, the fruit of that tree is going to be almonds. That fruit of that walnut tree is going to be walnuts. My other, another grandfather in South Central California, uh, they planted cotton on his property. And, and I knew if, if there was cotton plants growing out there, at the right time of year, I could go out there and pick the white cotton out of the little bowls and, and get cotton with the seeds and everything in it. And, and, but it, it would not produce almonds or walnuts or oranges. And we'd go further down, and there was a lot of orange trees and further down in Southern California. And not, you knew that there would be oranges coming off those. Uh, the fruit of the orange tree is oranges. The fruit of the peach tree up where I used to live, they had peaches. And, and you knew that the, you, you could see the, the tree and it produced peaches. The thing about the Holy Spirit is it produces more than one fruit. And it produces the fruit that Paul is talking about here. This is not, I don't think, the only fruit the Holy Spirit uh, produces, but these are probably the, the priority fruits, you might say. And, and these fruits are produced when we walk by the Spirit. The Holy Spirit produces these things. Now, again, these aren't things we gin up. These are produced. These come from the inner person, from the indwelling of the, of, of the Spirit, and they produce these things in our life. How? How do we walk in the Spirit? It says if you walk in the Spirit, you get these fruits. These fruits are part of your life. How? Uh, one of the things that you see connected with this is an immersion in the Word of God. It, it's an immersion in the written Word of God. I don't have my Bible here, but I have it in, uh, on my phone, and I have it printed out right here. And, and it's in the written Word of God. And, and if, if we're not in God's Word on a regular basis, we're not walking by the Spirit. We're not walking. And not those fruits are probably not going to be produced like they could be. Pray. You know, Jesus needed to pray and to communicate with his Father, and we do too. Fellowship, speaking the truth in love. There's a reality that that, that helps produce, and the Holy Spirit works in my life, and the Holy Spirit works in your life. And, and within that, there's a, a production of the fruits of the Spirit as we work in one another's lives. And it's difficult to do that virtually, I have to say. And the, the Scriptures don't look at... at the best thing being virtual. They look at the best thing being fellowship, and we'll see that in a minute. If we live by the Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. And what's the first fruit? The first fruit is love. Definitionally, the definition of, of love here as a fruit of the Spirit, again, it's produced. It's not a decision. It's, it's not something that you gin up. It's an emotion. And it's produced in, your, in our lives. Uh, from uh, Lo and Nida, which is a Greek lexicon, uh, it's love for someone, it's emotion, it's love for someone based on sincere appreciation with high regard, uh, to love, to regard with affection, uh, concern, having the best in mind for somebody. And that is produced, not because we make a decision as a fruit of the Spirit, but because we walk in the Spirit because we are in God's Word, because we're in communication with God, because we're walking by the Spirit of God. Now, this can be, in a punctuation, punctuationally, uh, it can be love, uh, colon, and the rest are actually descriptive words of love that can be that way. I don't think it's that way. I think each of these are, are separate kind of fruits that, that are produced by the Holy Spirit. But love is definitely foremost. It's the first in the list. 
In Galatians 5, 14, uh, for the whole law is filled in one word in the statement, just a little bit before this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Again, faith, hope, and love, the greatest of these things of, of love. And again, the love is, is an outworking of the Spirit's work in our lives. It's a fruit of the Spirit's work in our lives. And what, is out, what does that outworking look like? Well, first of all, there's a primacy of the love of God. And we see if, if this is the Holy Spirit's fruit, it's pointing us to a love of God first and foremost. He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. He who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he who does not take his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. He who has found his life will lose it. He who has lost his life for my sake will find it. It's not saying we don't love our family. We don't love our fathers and mothers and brothers and sisters and children. And, but it's like if we love them more than God, that love is not a fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit will focus our love first to God. And then because we have that connection, greater love to mankind. For if you were called to freedom, brethren, do not turn your freedom to an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. What does it look like? A fruit of the Spirit of love will serve one another. There will be a service to, pe to, to people. It's not just what I want, what I think. It's a service we serve one another in whatever way that can be. I, I hesitate to give examples because there's so many ways to do it. Now, as we look at love and as we look at the fruit of the Spirit and we look at love in context of the fruit of the Spirit, love is not reckless. Uh, unfortunately, there's a very popular song out there, and we haven't really done it, called Reckless Love. But in reality, God's love is not reckless. God's love is risky, but it's not reckless. It does sacrifice. It does provide a way, but no guarantee of acceptance. You know, I was in high school one time. I you probably can't believe it, but I was in high school. And when I was a junior in high school, I, there was this girl that I, I kind of liked, loved, sort of. And, and my first crush Girl. And if, if you, back then it was like the guys were ones that were supposed to call the girl and th things like that. And you were sitting in the phone, had a phone, you had an actual phone on the desk and there was only one in the house. So everybody saw and, you know, had a line to the wall and either punched it. And some of them were still rotary where you turned around and, you know, do I want to, you know, do it sitting there looking at the phone? Do I want to call her up or do I not want to call her up? And, and, you know, it's like, it, it's risky if I call her up, they, 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 she may not like me and everything will be bad and terrible until you, you take the risk for the love and you call. And in my case, I called her and we had a good relationship for quite a while. It was not Paula. I didn't know, Paula went to the same high school, but I didn't know her then. But, but it's, it, it was, it's risky. It's not reckless. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send the Son into the world to judge the world, but that the world might be saved through Him. He loved the world. He had an emotional connection. He, he, he wanted the best for the world. So His Son came to reestablish relationship. And that was risky because some people were going to reject Him. God doesn't like rejection. You know, if, uh, uh, none of us like rejection. God doesn't like that rejection, but he put himself out there and loved. He desired relationships, so he sacrificed. You know, in the era of, of COVID-19, there's, there's a reality that we still need to put ourselves out there in, in, in not, not reckless, but sometimes it's risky. First love, and that's focused outward. Uh, the second is an inward reality. The second fruit is joy, kara. The definition is gladness, great happiness, emo emotional satisfaction, uh, well-being. It's often in the context of relationship, us to God or us to others. Uh, 
in 2 John uh, 12, he says, Though I have many things to write to you, and they do use virtual communication. That's what the Bible is, essentially, is in a virtual communication. Though I have many things to write to you, I do not want to do so with pen and ink, paper and ink. But I hope to come to you soon and speak to you face to face so that your joy may be made full. There is a, a joy in relating to people, in relating to people face to face. And, and joy takers, so, you know, what are some joy takers? You know, if we, if we, we look at it, it's sin is a joy taker. Uh, our own personal sin, if we are walking against God, if we are, are doing things that are not constructive in our life but destructive, that, that ends up being a joy taker. Uh, sinners, uh, sin in somebody else's life can pull joy out of our life. Circumstances, uh, the, the COVID-19, for instance, uh, it can, it, 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 trying to navigate all of that whole thing can actually demolish joy in our life. But how do we stay in the presence of God? How do we stay? How does that, how do that, how does that fruit it produce? Well, one, walking in the Spirit. But again, stay close to Jesus. It's interesting when Jesus uh, is not even born yet, and we've mentioned this before, is, is that when Mary comes to Elizabeth and John the Baptist is in her womb, and Jesus in, is in Mary's womb. For behold, when the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby leaped in my womb for joy. Why? Because he was in the presence of Jesus. And, and it, 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 same thing, in that the, the thing that we, we get in the presence of Jesus in his words, we get in the presence of Jesus in the Gospels, we get in the presence of Jesus through prayer, we get in the presence of Jesus, and that brings joy. These things we write to you so that our joy may be made complete. And what is that? The Word of God. The words of God given to them, God's d direction, and God's communication to them makes their joy complete because they are connected with God. There's also an eschatological part of it in John 16, 22. Therefore, you too have grief now. We may have grief now, but I will see you again. Jesus is talking to his disciples. And your heart will rejoice, and no one will take your joy away from you. I think this is specifically speaking of the resurrection as he is coming back. He's going to rise from the dead in three days. But also, he is coming again. And Jesus is not with us, with us. In the future, He will be with us, with us. And there is a joy in that. There's a joy in, in looking forward to the future, resting in the power of the Holy Spirit today. Joy, even in the midst of trouble, even in the, in the midst of shaking foundations, there can be joy if we stay connected to Jesus, if we allow the Holy Spirit's fruit to work in our life and to, to produce the fruit of joy. Produce the fruit of love. First, as the Holy Spirit came, comes down, He produces these fruits in our lives. Love, joy. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you will bound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. As we stay connected to God, as we stay in His Word, as we pray, as we realize the reality of the Holy Spirit's indwelling in us, that produces in our life love, produces in our life joy in the midst of whatever's going on around us. Let's pray. Father, we thank You for Your Word. We thank You for Pentecost, and we thank You for Pentecost Sunday time we celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit to give power for witness, to give power for life. We thank you for the fruits of the Spirit, for love. It's an encouragement that we don't just really have to gin up that love, but we walk in the Spirit and that love is produced in our life. The joy is there. And Father, we pray for the, those things in, in our own lives, in the lives of our church and our families. Father, we pray for that um, witness in our community. Father, we pray for those who are, again, who are, are sick, uh, who are uh, recovering, 
We pray for uh, a finishing of this virus. Father, we also pray for the reality, the ability to uh, have church uh, coming together to gather. Uh, Father, I also pray that you would be uh, working in just the dissensions and the tensions that have become evident in our con country the last uh, few days. I just pray that you would work in those things. Help us to see one another as you see us. Help us to love, to exist in joy. In the name of Jesus, amen.